guys, it's Gretchen and welcome back to my channel. So I am very excited for today's video. I feel like several of you, a lot of you maybe, excited for it as well because I have received lots of comments and questions about this asking me when I am going to do a video about my LeBray Pearson. And I always try and give myself like several weeks after I get a Pearson done before I do one of these videos. So I do think it's been a good amount of time now that I can at least discuss how the procedure went and how the first few weeks following getting the Pearson done has been. I've done several of these videos before where it's like all about my blah 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 Pearson. You all seem to really enjoy them. So of course I have to do one about my new LeBray Pearson. So let's start with a few basics about how the appointment went and how the actual Pearson procedure went. So this Pearson was done right at the tail end of 2020. I had just put out my like future tattoos and Pearsons of 2021 video that I put out every year and the LeBray Pearson was on that list. I definitely did not think I was going to get any more body mods in 2020, but then something happened and it required my mom to need to go get a Pearson done. And I was like, let's see if they'll do a LeBray Pearson. Because yes, a lot of places are not doing under the mask Pearsons. We'll get into that in a minute. But the shop that I usually go to surprisingly was. So we went Wednesday, December 30th, right at the tail end of 2020. And we both got a Pearson. My mom had to get her Ford Helix redone because apparently she had pulled out her jewelry and didn't realize she had pulled it out and it had been out for a while. So it had closed up. So she needed to get it re-pierced. We went to our normal shop where we've gotten pretty much all of our piercings done before. We had a 1230 appointment that day. Yes, places are still requiring you to have appointments. I don't know many places that are doing just walk-ins right now, but you know, for the most part, they're doing appointments. So like I said, yes, some places are doing under the mask piercings. Now, I know some people are a little weirded out by this or don't think this is a good practice, but I look at it this way. A tattoo and piercing shop is probably going to be more sterile than a lot of other places. And yes, I did have to pull my mask down for the piercing to be done, but there were only two other people in the room, the piercer and my mom. I know my mom was fine and I would be willing to bet money that the piercer was fine, so I was not worried. So for those of you who are like, wait, your shop was doing under the mask piercings? Yes, they were. I'm pretty confident that it was sterile enough that I personally did not feel concerned. So I don't wanna hear from anyone how it was unsafe or unsanitary because that just shows you have not been to a tattoo or piercing shop often enough to realize how sterile those places are even before pandemic hit. So the piercer that did my LeBray is one that I have not been to before. I believe he was relatively new to the shop, but he's got 15 plus years of piercing experience. So I trusted him with that. He also did the piercing freehanded, which means he did not use a clamp. Now, pretty much how the procedure went is very similar to how my Filtrum slash Medusa Pearson went. Very similar. That one also, I didn't have a clamp for that. My piercer freehanded with it. Sometimes piercers just prefer to do freehanded piercings because it allows them to kind of navigate a little bit better. The clamp is supposed to hold it in place, but when you've got years of experience, you may find that you just don't need the clamp anymore, which I personally was very happy for because the clamp is probably the most painful part of any person when it is used. So like with any oral piercing, you have to rinse your mouth out with some kind of mouthwash. This helps clean the inside of your mouth. And then once I was done rinsing that out, the piercer then took like, you know, a wipe, cleaned the area, made sure that there was nothing there. I didn't wear makeup this time, mostly because we're wearing masks. So what's the point of having a full face of makeup and then you have to slap a mask on. So there wasn't any makeup to remove, but it is good to clean the area and just make sure that it is good to go. I did think this part was interesting. The piercer remarked that my bottom lip was more full, which made it a little bit difficult to kind of get the right positioning for the labray because he didn't want the lip to like overhang the piercing, but he didn't want the piercing to be too far down on my lip area and like going into my chin. So he took his time to make sure that he found a spot that made the piercing noticeable without the lip kind of overhanging it and without the piercing being too far down. And I think he did a pretty good job. And much like with my Filtrum Medusa piercing, I laid down for the entire process. Now I will say this piercing ended up being less painful than my Filtrum Pearson. I think because this is a little bit more of a sensitive area, that's why it was a smidge more painful. This area is just thick. This is a much 
thicker spot than up here. So on a scale of one to 10, one being the least painful, 10 being the most painful, I'd give this one about a three. So it's just a step down from what I said about my Filtrum, which I gave that a four. This one for me was about a three. Yes, it was thicker to pierce through, but it wasn't bad at all. I tend to build up potential pain in my head so that when it actually happens, it's not quite so bad. Good tactic if you're scared of getting a piercing. That was it for actually getting it done. Very quick and easy. Wasn't any long drawn out process. And again, for me, it wasn't that painful. Now for the healing process. So this piercing is just shy of being four weeks old. Like. By the time this video comes out, it'll be a day shy of four weeks old. So it is still healing and will be for a bit. So again, the healing for this piercing has been very similar to my Filtrum piercing. However, I will say that my Labray piercing has not been as swollen as my Filtrum piercing ended up being. There were some times when my Filtrum Pearson was healing where it just would swell up so much that it felt like the bar, even though it was an extremely long bar, it definitely felt like it needed to be longer. I have not experienced that so far with my Labray, knock on wood, though there was a stretch of like about two days in there where the lip did kind of take up the entire length of the bar, not to the point of like being excruciating, but noticeable. Now the Labray Pearson, yes, my teeth would get caught on my Medusa piercing in the early days of me getting that done, but not quite as often as I have found my teeth to get caught on my Labray piercing this time. I'm assuming it's because, you know, your bottom draw is the one that's doing the work, goes up and down and all that fun stuff, but yikes, have my teeth gotten caught on this piercing. I have not noticed my jewelry getting caught on my gums like it happened with my Filtrum, but it definitely gets caught on my teeth frequently at least in the first week or so. Even after getting the piercing done, my mom and I went and got a lunch. I was like, all right, I'm gonna take it easy. I'm gonna eat something that's a little bit easier for me to like handle, cause my mouth is sore. I don't wanna put too much in there right now. Whoo, I saw stars at one point while we were eating because it got caught on my tooth and I bit up and my goodness did it pull. If you plan on getting any lip piercing down here done, definitely be careful when you eat because yikes. It has gotten much better now at this four week mark. I still find that because the bar is longer that my teeth do sometimes get caught on it, but I can almost tell when it's gonna happen before it does. So then I know not to bite down so hard. It's kind of hard to like stop it before it happens, but you can prevent it from like really hurting. I will say so far there have been zero bumps on the inside of my lip. With my Filtrum Pearson, I often found that in the early days, in the first few weeks, there was a small bump that would form on the inside of my lip. That has not been the case so far with my Labrae Pearson. No bumps whatsoever, knock on wood. However, that being said, on the outside, I have noticed a little raise. I'm not gonna call it a bump, cause it's not quite like full-fledged bump, but every so often, like a little raise will come up and I'm just linking that with irritation. I've also found that the Labray piercing gets extremely crusty compared to the Filtrum. Don't know what that's about, but it just ends up getting crustier than the Filtrum did. So at that point, I just take a Q-tip with some H2Ocean or some Neomed, whatever I have available at the time, and I just kind of clean it up and go about my day. Now, as for starter jewelry with the Labray, pretty much the same thing as with the Medusa. It is a 16 gauge, three eighths of an inch, just Labray stud. After about four to six weeks, I can downsize. So I'm thinking about downsizing either next week or the following week at that six week mark. It'll depend. Yes, I will film it. That is just gonna be a downsize. So I'll probably go to like five sixteenths of an inch bar because three eighths is whoo, really long. Now, just because I will be downsizing my jewelry does not mean that the piercing is healed. It can take two to three months for a lip piercing to heal. So once I do downsize it, I will leave it alone until that two or three month mark. When I can see whether or not it is fully healed, if it's still not healed by that time, I'll continue to leave it alone. But it will be nice to downsize the bar so that it's not getting caught on my teeth, which I think will aid in the healing process. So I do plan to swap jewelry out around either February 3rd or 10th. Again, I will film it so that you can see. Hopefully it'll go well, fingers crossed. So that is just a quick rundown about my Labray piercing and how it was to get, how it's been so far, and 
where we'll go moving forward with it. I absolutely love my facial setup now with my two nostril piercings, my septum, my philtrum, and my labray. Still on the fence about what I want to do with my nostril ones, whether I want to get more added there, but for now I am very content with how it looks. Again, I did not find the labray piercing to be incredibly painful, but pain tolerance varies for everyone, so even though it was like a 3 out of 10 for me, it may be something higher for someone else or it even could be lower for someone else. If you have any questions regarding the labray Pearson and like my experience with it so far, leave them in the comments below. If you yourself have a labray Pearson of any kind or just any kind of lip piercing, drop it in the comments below. I like to see what everyone's setup is. Mine apparently are called cyber bites, which is fun. Also, if you haven't checked out that video about different type of lip piercings, you should go check it out over here. It is pretty fascinating. Special thank you to my patrons. You can help support the channel on Patreon while having access to videos early, viewing patron-only content, and more. But that is it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a big ol' thumbs up. Go on down there and hit that subscribe button, wherever it may be, because I don't know, even though I do, this is just my shtick now. Also hit that notification bell in case you want to know when I upload, and in case YouTube wants to let you know when I upload, because I would really appreciate it. And until next time, bye guys! Mm -hmm.